we're going to be using ChatGPT 5 to build us a full risk dashboard of our automated algo trading portfolio. I just have a rant real quickly before we get started. So I think ChatGPT is great, but a lot of algo traders don't use it correctly. From my experience, ChatGPT is really good at analyzing risk. It's good at telling you what you don't know. It's good at fixing code syntax errors. And it's great at probably a lot of other things. But what it's not good at is creating new trading systems, backtesting. I mean, it doesn't really have the feature to backtest, but it's not good at that. I don't think you should be using it for that purpose. So I'm gonna be showing you how to properly use it in this video. Before we get started, hello, my name is Jacob Amaral. I build, code, and trade automated trading systems on the futures market. See the links in the description below if you wanna work with me. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, we're gonna build a full risk dashboard. So here's all these systems, all my systems I've ever developed. Uh, I run them in a simulation and then I pick the ones that I wanna trade live. So let's just pick two. Let's do, uh, let's pick say this one. We'll do blue lighting ATR. And then let's do blue lightning and let's do say this one ACE. So this is uh, an intratrader platform I use to run my automated trading systems. And I'm gonna take two systems. I'm gonna essentially take their back tests and get ChatGPT to build a risk dashboard. It's gonna tell us what could go wrong, how it does in black swan events, our max drawdown, maybe capital requirements, et cetera. All right, so to get the back tests, I'll just right click and go to strategy performance. Uh, it should do it for both, right? Yeah, we have blue lightning and ace, okay. So I wanna take the, uh, I guess we'll take the trades. Yeah, we'll export the trades. So this is ACE trades, export to Excel for us. And then we have blue lightning, oh, we want trades. Blue lightning, ATR trades. So let's attach those, date modified. Build me a full risk dashboard with these two trading systems. I want to know my max drawdown, uh, black swan event performance. We want to know how we did on volatile events such as 2022 Ukraine, et cetera. Capital requirements. It should know the capital requirements because in the trades, it says the symbol, so it should know. All right, build me a full risk dashboard. We'll say in Excel, it's better to be specific with your prompts. Also, one tip I wanna talk about is NinjaTrader is great at telling you the close trade drawdown. So the max drawdown when your trade closes, but it's not really good at telling you your open trade drawdown. So I'm gonna see if we can figure it out. And open trade max drawdown MAE. So use the MAE max adverse excursion to see what your unrealized loss is. Let's see if ChatGPT can figure that out. Okay, let's do that. So we got blue lightning, Excel sheet, ACE, Excel sheet. Oh, I wanted to ask for correlation too. So yeah, ChatGPT is really good at analyzing your risk for you. I think it really excels at that. Uh, yes, yes, combine both systems into a portfolio. Sorry, my camera. So it's gonna give us the equity curves. I don't really care about that too much. Max drawdown, yes, capital requirements. Um, open trade max drawdown, MAE. Black Swan event stress test. Uh, trade distribution and stats. All I really care about is honestly number two, three and four. And then we'll ask to give it correlation after, after it's done. So with NinjaTrader, which, you know, is great at, uh, uh, it's great at monitoring individual trading systems. That's great and all, but when you trade live, you're trading as a portfolio, right? All systems in one account and you want to know what's the worst that could happen? How much capital do I need to trade this portfolio? Uh, what's my correlation? Like, should I be trading these two systems together? That's where I think ChatGPT excels at. Uh, and that's what I think you should be using it, using it as an algo trader is to be analyzing your risk. I've built, you know, a lot of Excel 
dashboards in the past uh, with you know VBA and, and and calculations. But if I did this through ChatGPT, it would have saved me a lot of time. Now I've been doing this before since before ChatGPT. But yeah, I think every algo trader should be using ChatGPT to analyze their risk and get their capital requirements. So let's let this cook for a minute. Oh yeah, I forgot you can view its Python code. Really cool. What did it say about Black Swan? I guess I'm probably have to give it specific dates. Simulate 20% overnight gap against open trades. Estimate portfolio impact by scaling through an exposure. Show combined system resilience. I mean, yeah, that's a nothing wrong with that. Maybe I should have gave it specific dates. Okay. So there it's combined the trades for us. Gives us our max drawdown in dollars. This is based on one futures contract uh, in percentage as well. Worst trade, 95% trade MAE, max open A MAE exposure. Okay. So at one time we were down 10,000 per contract in open trades. Smaller than our max drawdown. And then it individualized it for us. Excellent. So I downloaded this right. All right. So the open exposure is less than the max drawdown, which is good to see. Depends on the trading system. If tra both of these trading systems have a stop loss and profit target. Or sorry, no, one of them does. Blue Lightning has a profit target. Ace just has a trail stop. But if a system doesn't have or has an indicator exit or exit after a certain amount of time, then you definitely need to be wary of the open trade risk because it could be bigger than your max drawdown. Okay, so, and then it, okay, give us a download link for the dashboard. Let's see if it's everything I wanted. Okay, there's all the trades combined, excellent. System stats, yeah, so this is per system. Love this, open MAE exposure. So it did spike at one point. Stress tests, wow, I gotta research this. Shadow 1.5, I'm gonna ask for explanations on what that is, that's cool. Sorry, let me zoom in. Super cool. Capital requirements. Let's see how they do it. So minimum, 1.2 times the max drawdown. Suggested 1.5. Conservative 2.0. Okay. So yeah, there's... Depends how much risk you want to take, right? Uh, there's no one all be all capital requirements, right? It's usually... The most common is either the full margin... So uh, I take the margin of ES and NQ futures combined, and that's what you trade with, although that's not really conservative. That's definitely very aggressive. Um, usually it's two times the max drawdown, uh, which would be that amount there, 37,000. So that's cool. Dashboard. I would have liked some more charts. Oh, there we go. So portfolio equity versus ME Black Swan Shadows. Here's the drawdown of both systems combined. So I wanted, to, what are these shadows? That's kind of cool. I've never seen that. Explain the MAE shadows. And then we're also gonna get a correlation table too. Great question. The MAE shadows are a way to stress test your portfolio against black swan type moves by asking, what if every trade went as bad as its maximum open loss or even worse? So MAE is the max adverse excursion, the worst unrealized loss that a trade reached while it was open. Uh, this tells us the hidden risk inside each trade, how much it would have cost you if you were forced to liquidate at the worst point. In the dashboard, I built alternative equity curves where instead of using the actual realized PL, we replaced it with a stressed outcome. So every trade's PL. Oh, okay, so it replaces the PL of the worst actual PL, which would be the MAE. And then they did, they did that one times, 1.5, two times. Why this matters. The realized equity curve shows what happened historically. The MAE shadow curve show how fragile the system could be if liquidity disappears, stops failing during an overnight gap, or an extreme event. If your portfolio survives even the 1.5 or 2.0 shadow tests with manageable drawdowns, it's much more robust. If it collapses under the one time of a shadow, you know the system is relying on luck recoveries and it's fragile. So interesting. So 
Okay, so every trade it's taking the worst MAE. Potentially telling us this system isn't good. Now the thing is, the, these two trading systems, I know they're, they're intraday, so they're always exiting at the end of the day. So if we did have a gap, it wouldn't matter as much because it can only en be entering during the day and it's exiting at the end of the day. It's not holding overnight. Interesting. Okay, what if I say both of these systems trade intraday and exit on the cash session close at 4 p.m. Eastern? Would these shadows still apply? And then we'll do our correlation. Okay, since both systems are intraday only and always exit by the 4 p.m. Eastern cash close, the risk prof profile is very different from swing overnight systems. Why MAE shadows matter less for intraday systems? No overnight gap risk, that's true. Stops usually respect intraday, yes, unless there's a halt. Uh, flash cross scenarios still exist. Since you don't carry overnight risk, the 2.0 MAE black swan scenario is less realistic. The 1.0 shadow is still meaningful because a check through system could withstand intraday halts. Yeah, even the one times is really bad. We can see this red, red is the one X. Uh, still very unprofitable. That's interesting. Well, I learned something new. I didn't know about these shadows. Uh, okay, so we'll have to research more on that. Uh, my goal was to get the capital requirements, which we did, and we need the correlation table. No, but I do want you to uh, to run a correlation table with the two systems closed and open trade. I want to add it on the dashboard. So I think it's just going to give it to me separately. We could do the correlations ourselves, just going to the trades, finding the, uh, it might be a little bit harder actually, because it's stacked top to bottom. Okay, so it gave us correlation. They're very highly correlated, 84% correlated. MAE, that means the open trades are very low correlated, but wow. Closed trades, they're very correlated, which makes sense. I mean, ACE is, uh, I mean, they're ES and NQ. So they're both stock indices, very highly correlated systems. Uh, can you add that correlation table to our dashboard, please? I'll attach the dashboard uh, in the comments below so you guys can use it. But yeah, you should be using this to Definitely determine capital requirements, give you an overall view of what could go wrong with your trading system portfolio. And then maybe you wanna make changes. Maybe you wanna remove systems, add systems, correlation table, okay, yeah. Yeah, so that's very high. I wouldn't trade these two systems. 84%, it's way too high. I'd trade one or the other. 84% correlation is very high. I want to trade the better risk adjusted system what do you recommend Let's see what ChatGPT thinks personally if i were to trade choose between the two i want to trade the the better risk adjusted system so blue lightning has in its back test a net profit to max so it's it's return to drawdown is 3.0 about the 3.1 3.2 it's also at equity peak, so it's been making money recently. Ace has, oh yeah, Ace is way worse. Uh, not even a 2.0 return of drawdown. So it's net, pro it's made more net profit, but it's max drawdown is huge. So I would choose Blue Lightning. Let's see what ChatGPT says. Hasn't figured it out yet. Yeah, look, it's comparing the return to drawdown. Winner. So it should pick Blue Lightning. Let's see. Oh, it picked Ace? Huh? Max TD apparently has a higher sharp. It's return to TD is lower. So yes, Blue Lightning does have a higher return to drawdown, 3.4 versus 1.66. But apparently Ace has a better, has a better sharp, makes more PL, has a higher win rate. Uh, average win and average loss were worse. Profit factor is better. 
expectancy is better. So yeah, I, I guess what ChatGPT did is it took culmination of a different factor is where I just looked at the return of drawdowns. That's interesting. I'd, I'd rather trade Blue Lightning for sure. Way better return of drawdown, but yeah, that's, that's very interesting. So anyways, uh, what we did in this video is we created our own risk dashboard for a hypothetical portfolio. We got our capital requirements, how much money we need to trade this portfolio. Uh, what could potentially happen in terms of drawdowns? Uh, always know trading live, you usually go past your max drawdown at some point, it will pretty much always happen. But it gives you a good range of, of what could happen. And yeah, I think that's what this is how you should be using ChatGPT for algo trading is managing risk, uh, discovering risk, explaining it, and then using those metrics to make smart decisions for your automated trading portfolio. I'm going to link this dashboard in the comments below. I hope you found value in this video. And if you want to learn more about automated trading, quant trading, et cetera, et cetera, see the links in the description below. We'd love to work with you. We'll see you next week. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.